Throughout the history of organized crime in our country, there have been mobsters who, despite committing deplorable criminal acts as civilians, also serve their country proudly in the armed forces. In some cases, these same men were even decorated with medals for bravery, valor, and sacrifice. This creates an interesting juxtaposition between the reverence with which the citizenry of our country holds our men and women in uniform and the way we both despise and are fascinated by mobsters and organized crime. This is a list of mobsters who serve their country in the armed forces. This is Mobsters in the Military, Part 2. John, Johnny Green, Farachi, U.S. Army. Born in 1922, John, Johnny Green, Farachi, was a member of the Bonanno crime family and was described as a large-scale loan shark with numerous loan shark victims who, by one law enforcement estimate, had half a million dollars in loans out on the street. Because of this, Farachi would become a top earner for the Bonanno family. However, before his criminal exploits in the Bonanno family took place, Farachi landed on the beaches of Normandy. He would fight the Nazis all the way across Europe and would be awarded a Bronze Star for valor in battle. Later, on the streets of New York City, his wartime service would earn Farachi the immediate respect of his fellow mobsters. Ten years before his death, the aging Bonanno soldier and three underlings faced federal loan sharking charges after a would-be victim went to the FBI and agreed to wear a wire. I got a nice baseball bat in my trunk. Bust up your legs, one of Hirachi's crew members said to the cooperator, according to the arrest complaint. In another taped conversation, the same guy bragged about his abilities. Yesterday, I got a hold of a young guy in my neighborhood. I gave him such a fucking beating. I've been doing this all my life. As an aging mobster, John Johnny Green Farachi would eventually find himself in court. In a 2002 arraignment, Farachi's lawyer pointed out to the judge that his client was a World War II veteran who landed at Normandy. The 78-year-old judge simply replied, so did I. Farachi would pass away in January of 2011 at the age of 88. Verano, Benny Eggs, Mangano, U.S. Army Air Corps. Verano Frank Benny Eggs Mangano was born on September 7, 1921, in Lower Manhattan, New York City, where his parents settled after immigrating from Catania, Italy. His father began as a chicken farmer and sold eggs from his own grocery store. This was how Verano Mangano became Benny Eggs. Mangano and his childhood friend Vincent the Chin Gigante would both come up in the Greenwich Village crew run by mob powerhouses Thomas Tommy Ryan Eboli and Anthony Tony Bender Strollo. As the years went by, Mangano became a gatekeeper of sorts for the Genovese administration. He would eventually become underboss of the family when his old friend Vincent the Chin Gigante became the boss following the retirement of Philip Benny Squint Lombardo. The infamous Windows case would finally bring Mangano down. From 1978 to 1990, four of the five crime families of New York rigged bids for 75% of $191 million, or about $142 million, of the windows contracts awarded by the New York City Housing Authority. Installation companies were required to make union payoffs between $1 and $2 for each window installed. On May 30, 1990, Mangano was indicted in the windows case along with other members of the aforementioned families. On October 19, 1991, Mangano was convicted of one count of extortion and a related conspiracy count in the case. On March 26, 1993, Mangano was sentenced to 15 years and 8 months in prison and fined $100,000. On November 2, 2006, he was released after 13 years in prison and 6 months in a halfway house. He had heart disease and macular degeneration that left him virtually blind. Mangano died of natural causes 
in Greenwich Village on August 18, 2017. What some do not know is that before his mob exploits, Venero Mangano was a decorated war hero during World War II. When the United States entered World War II, Venero Benieggs Mangano enlisted in the armed forces. At the time, he was 5'4 and 145 pounds, had not finished high school, and was working as a restaurant waiter. Mangano would serve as a bomber tail gunner with the United States Army Air Corps in Europe and was decorated with the Distinguished Flying Cross for heroism and extraordinary achievement while participating in an aerial flight. He also received an air medal with four oak leaf clusters and three battle stars. Despite a lifetime as a gangster, Mangano did without a doubt serve his country with distinction during the war. Matthew Matty the Horse, Ainello, U.S. Army. Matthew Joseph Matty the Horse Ainello was born to immigrant parents on June 18, 1920. He was one of eight children and worked primarily in the restaurant business from an early age. Ainello would later work the docks in Brooklyn's Navy Yard when World War II broke out and like so many others, would end up joining the U.S. Army after Pearl Harbor. Ionello would be shipped out and would see combat in the Philippines as an artilleryman, where he would earn a bronze star for valor in battle when he charged directly into a Japanese machine gun nest and was able to disable it. He would also receive a Purple Heart for being wounded in battle. After returning home from the war, Ionello would become a Genovese family associate before being proposed for membership by Frank Funzi Thierry, and shortly thereafter, made into the family. By the early 1970s, he would be made capo of his own crew and become a top earner for the Genovese family. He would own or control numerous restaurants, including the infamous Umberto's Clam House, which became ingrained in mob lore as the place where Crazy Joe Gallo was murdered. Along with union racketeering, he also extorted protection money from bar owners, pornography peddlers, and topless dancers as Times Square became filled with peep shows. Ionello would later do 10 years in prison in the 80s and 90s for racketeering and other crimes. He was released in 1995 and would become acting boss two years later when Vincent the Chin Gigante was imprisoned. By 1998, Ionello was deeply involved in Amalgamated Transit Union Local 1181, a bus driver's union, as well as extorting waste management businesses throughout the early 2000s. On June 10, 2006, Ionello was indicted in federal court in New Haven on charges of racketeering involving trash hauling in southwestern Connecticut. During this time, he was also under indictment for racketeering in New York. He pled guilty to the New York racketeering charges and received 18 months in prison. He then pled guilty in Connecticut and was sentenced to two years in federal prison to run concurrent with the 18-month sentence in New York. Agnello's attorney had asked for leniency, saying Agnello had cancer and was in poor health. On April 3, 2009, after serving two years, Agnello was released from the Butner Federal Medical Center. On August 15, 2012, Agnello died at his home in Old Westbury, New York, of health problems related to heart ailments and other illnesses, including prostate cancer. Despite being a gangster for most of his life, Matty the Horse served his country proudly in World War II. George Barone, U.S. Navy George Barone was born in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn in 1923 to an Italian father and an Irish-Hungarian mother. After growing up on the tough Brooklyn streets, Barone would volunteer at the age of 18 to serve in the U.S. Navy. After the outbreak of World War II, Barone would be shipped out to the Pacific Theater as the United States prepared to take back islands under the control of the Empire of Japan. Barone fought in battles on Guam, Saipan, Leyte, Luzon, and Iwo Jima. As a radio man, his daily job was to guide land crafts onto the beach. One of Barone's many lifelong ailments from World War II was a respiratory illness. It started, he told friends, because he would often bury his face into the black sand of Iwo Jima's beaches in an effort to evade the deadly, ongoing Japanese shelling. I breathe so much of that damn sand, 
I'm still spitting it out, he'd tell friends. Jerry Capisi would write that Barone participated in five of the bloodiest invasions in the Pacific Theater. After his discharge from the military, he came home and joined the Longshoremen's Association and eventually became a hiring boss. After assaulting a man who was disgruntled over not being hired, Barone was charged with felony assault. This incident would push Barone to choose a life of crime and he would join the Jets, a street gang led by his good friend Johnny Earl. As a Jet, Barone would kill for the first time. He would later join the Genovese family and become a top hitman for Fat Tony Salerno. Later in life, after feeling betrayed by the organization he devoted his life to, Barone would turn state's evidence and testify against his mob superiors. By the end of his career, Barone was alleged to have killed upwards of 20 people. Barone died in January 2011 at the age of 86.